Plants are amazing organisms. They capture energy directly from the sun. They respond and adapt to their environment. They drive every biogeochemical cycle on our planet. They form the foundation for all life on Earth. So let's learn something about them. Plants are photosynthesizing organisms, which make up most of the biomass on Earth, and they include a whole range of forms like trees, grasses, flowers, ferns, cacti, mosses, liverworts, but not algae because algae are protists. What are you, two? Anyway, plants are kind of a big deal, either directly or indirectly. All animals' source of food is plants. An herbivore eats plants directly, while a carnivore eats the herbivores that eat the plants. What we're really talking about here is the concept of food webs and food chains, which are really beyond the scope of this video. In any event, without plants, there would be no food, and there would certainly be no life on Earth, at least as far as we are familiar with it. Now, there are some pretty basic things that you should know about plants already. Plants grow in size. Plants need water. And plants can't live without light. But how do plants grow in size? What do they do with water? Do they drink it for the same reasons that animals do? What chemicals are involved in the functioning of plants? And how does light fit into this picture? Before we go any further, let's consider the goal of this video. After watching this video, you should be able to explain what happens to the mass of a plant's tissues as it grows. Now, we are somewhat limited in our investigation tools. We have BTB and a scale, and that's about it. In this part of our investigation, we're going to use only the scale. A scale is an instrument that records mass. We can use a scale to measure the change in mass when particles come in or out of an object. When particles move into the object, it increases in mass. When they move out of the object, it decreases in mass. Remember that we're trying to figure out what happens to the mass of plants as they grow, so we'll need our scale and a dish. We'll use the tear function to zero out the mass of the dish so that we can ignore it. And then we need some seeds. These seeds belong to a plant called buckwheat. When we record the mass of our seeds at the beginning of our investigation, we find that they have a mass of 2.00 grams. Let's remember that for later. Now let's spread our seeds evenly in some moist, sterile plant growth medium. All right, that looks pretty even. So now let's put our seeds under a bright light for a few days, and we can watch as the seeds come alive. So after a few weeks, we have some live, healthy, growing plants. Now let's figure out how to record their change in mass. First of all, we didn't record the mass of the plant growth medium, so we need to remove it from the plants. There we go. And there's something else we need to do, which might at first sound a little confusing. We need to dry the plants out. Why is that? Remember, the seeds were dry when we first massed them. Until we placed them in the damp soil, there was no water involved with the seeds. If we now mass the plants without drying them, all we're really massing is how much water was added. We want to know what happens to a plant's tissues when it grows, regardless of water. This is called dry mass, or sometimes dry weight. So, unfortunately for our plants, we are going to have to dry them out. Once the plants are completely dried out, let's record their mass again. As we did before, we can use the tear function to zero out the mass of the container. And we mass our plants. And we need to add the seed cases because those were part of the seeds that we massed at the beginning. All right, let's see what we got. The final mass is 2.61 grams. If we take our final mass of 2.61 and subtract the initial mass of 2.00, we get a change in mass of plus 0.61 grams. 
So what conclusions can you make at this point? What did you learn about the plants? Take a moment to pause the video and come up with a basic explanation for what the plants were doing with mass and particles. Okay, let's talk about conclusions. We recorded an increase in the dry mass of the plants. An increase in mass indicates that particles entered the plants. And by the way, we know that these particles were not water, since we dried the plants out and removed the water before we masked them. The fundamental conclusion is this. As they grew, the plants were gathering particles and therefore increasing in mass. At this point, let's review our goal. After watching this video, you should be able to explain what happens to the mass of a plant's tissues as it grows. If you can't do that, go back and watch the parts of the video that you didn't understand. But remember that science is not just about answers, it's also about questions. At this point, pause the video once more and come up with a few questions of your own. What questions can you come up with to extend our investigation? Here are a few questions that we came up with. What were the particles that the plants were gathering? Where did these particles come from? The soil, air, water, the light? And what was the role of light in the growth of the plants? Did it help them to gather these particles? We'll explore these other questions in our next video. Until next time, remember, you can learn anything. Mm.